All right, guys, welcome um, Dr. Zach Bush to the CC University and uh, CC Lifestyle community. Uh, Dr. Zach Bush, thank you so much for, for joining us, man. Uh, you, I know we were chatting the other week about uh, gut health and you've done so much and you've, you've accomplished so much and taking the time to, to speak with this community means a lot to me. Oh, thanks so much for having me on. I really have a huge respect for what you've created here and it's uh, really exciting as a medical doc to see uh, somebody like yourself, a, a real advocate for uh, patients around the world to hear uh, you know, an unbiased voice uh, come into this space because uh, I can speak to the medical training that I went through and uh, I was uh, president of my student body at the University of Colorado Medical School and then chief resident at the University of Virginia and all this kind of you know, seemingly you know, advanced, you know, accomplishments. And I can tell you, I was clueless uh, back in the day uh, on, in regard to how somebody would get healthy. We just are not taught the mechanisms and biology of health. We are only taught the mechanisms and functions of disease. And so that makes us very useless when it comes to somebody walking in the door with an autoimmune condition or something of the like, or a cancer or anything else, asking you, doc, I get the meds. I, I understand what you're doing with the steroids. Yep. You're supporting my immune system. But doc, I really would like an intact immune system and I would like to be healthy. How would I go about that? Yeah. And my patients started asking me that after a few years of me get delivering them world-class pharmaceutical medicine. And across the board, you know, I'm an endocrinologist is one of my specialties. And so I'm seeing a lot of autoimmune stuff with uh, you know, Hashimoto's, top, type 1 diabetes, you know, uh, adrenal insufficiency, all these autoimmune conditions. And, and in that, invariably, you have to admit very quickly as a doc is like, look, we're throwing Band-Aids at you. We have no idea on how to really stop the root cause of your problem. Yep. And so you guys as patients and advocates over the last two decades have seen not only the epidemic of autoimmunity in the form of Crohn's colitis, you've also seen the epidemic of uh, this, you know, kind of amping up, you know, big gun drugs for your condition. Yeah. Back in the day with methotrexate, now we've got Humira, which of course, you know, first risk factor on the drug is cancer. You know? So, <laughs> okay, now we're throwing, you know, cancer causing drugs at autoimmune patients that have dysfunctional immune system to begin with. It's so ass backwards uh, and which, you know, resonates maybe more with this community than anything else. But that, that situation as a doctor, I can tell you creates a huge defensiveness, yeah, sense of insecurity, and, yeah. and frankly, uh, a sense of hopelessness that we react to emotionally. And I know it did it to me, and I know that it does it to my colleagues that you guys you know, invariably end up bumping into here and there, which is we tend to blame you subconsciously or you know, subverbally yeah. you know, for your own problems. We, you ask us difficult questions back for the crappy drugs we have. We, we respond defensively. And so it's led to a huge breakdown in, in the overall function. All of this is to say, good mm -hmm. job, well done on this podcast. <laughs> because all of this is to say that unless an advocate steps up, yeah. start to demand a communication, a, a, a conversation to be created around the health of autoimmune patients, we will never get there. The medical doctors will never start that conversation. So it's a real honor for me to be here among you because ultimately you guys are giving me the avenue to speak to the science that I've created over the last eight years after leaving academia because academia didn't have a methodology for me to even talk to my colleagues about health and healing because it's really, there's no, just no construct. There's no, no lecture given on health and healing in a typical uh, academic hallway. So you guys are actually providing a, a community experience here that's going to allow a transformation, not just for Crohn's colitis, transformation, not just for autoimmune disease, a literal transformation of human experience. Yeah. Because to date, we've all been doing damage control on human disease. Yep. We do it self-medication of alcohol. We do it through over-the-counter with anti-inflammatories. We do it through pharmaceutical models. We do self-abuse into our bodies through the food chain. We do all kinds of damage. Yeah. As we start to understand the science of human health, it allows us to not only reorganize our understanding of a disease process, it helps us reorganize what your podcast intends to do, which is what does healthy lifestyle look like and yeah. why would health leap out of that lifestyle? 
what are those mechanisms? So that's my biggest passion. So long introduction there to say congratulations and thank you. And I think yeah. a lot of patients out there, even though they're not doctors, are looking at the, what the doctor is saying and saying, this just doesn't add up. Yeah. This yeah, it doesn't take a rocket science to figure out that there's no logic in, in our approach to disease yeah, management. that's out of the bag. I mean, it's just there. I mean, you've got 12-year-old kids you're giving Humira, and you're like, yeah. how long do I got to take this for? For the rest of my life, you know? I, I got, I, you know, I've got clients who were recommended to get colectomy surgeries and ileostomy surgeries, and, you know, a few months later with natural protocols, are thriving symptom-free. Now, I'm not saying that's everybody, and there's no blueprint, but this, the, even, even you know, a, a big problem I have is, is the diagnosis of Crohn's disease. I mean, we're literally just saying, yeah, it's, that's Crohn's, you know, and putting this broad spectrum diagnosis on all these, all these underlying issues, which some of them could be, you know, as simple as an extreme bacterial infection. And I'd say the majority of them are extreme bacterial deficiencies. And yep. so the majority of cases of autoimmune disease end up being a, a, a paucity or deficiency in micro ecosystem, leaving you extremely vulnerable to injury. And I totally agree with you that the catch term of, of inflammatory bowel disease and coming, encompassing ulcerative colitis and Crohn's is probably the most accurate term we have. And so it simply says inflammatory bowel <laughs> and disease. That's <laughs> But then to go and try to put a finer point on it and say, well, you have Crohn's or you have fistulizing Crohn's or you have, you know, all these different subsets is, is a total BS trip because it would suggest that we know what the hell is going on. When in fact, we have no idea the pathophysiology that would take a human intestine to the point where it can't even figure out where the lumen of the intestine should be. Mm -hmm. To lose track of the three-dimensional matrix to the point where you're getting and, you know, fistula, fistulas in the, in the perianal area is bad enough, but I've got a patient in my clinic that nearly died three times from fistulas that were coming out through the abdominal wall, through the chest wall. Like his whole body had become avenue for new intestinal tubes, and the body was in this, you know, attempt at repair state, and it was destroying, literally taking apart the matrix of his body because there was no blueprint left. And so that journey is really, you know, of that patient, I've been with him now for almost seven years, something like that. And his fistulas have closed up and he's, he's really in a non-bleeding state um, at this point. He has had a couple of flares in the last uh, three or four years that tend to be relatively short-lived now because he knows the toolbox. He can tell me coming in typically what the stressors are that are, have re-triggered this syndrome in him. But I like looking at it as a syndrome or a collection of symptoms or signs rather than a disease process, because if it was a disease process, meaning there was some ir irreparable you know, condition there, then we could, it would be impossible to see spontaneous remission, which of course happens all the time in Crohn's. I don't actually see human disease in my clinic anymore. Yeah. My patients come in with diagnoses of breast cancer, colon cancer, pancreatic cancer, Crohn's, type 1 diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, acne, major depression, you name it. And I don't care what name I just put on it. It's the same freaking thing. Yeah. Every one of those cases or syndromes are not a disease. They're just a lack of health in different organ systems. Yep. And that turns right. out that, you know, we, we have to make this shift away from a belief in disease matrix to an understanding that there's either health or a lack of health. And that's all. Man, you just hit the, you, I mean, you just hit it right on the head so many people so many of my clients are paralyzed by this idea of i have an incurable disease and they carry it around with them as like it's a disability you guys you're, there, you're, there's no in saying oh is there no cure for this there's no cure there's not a cure for anything death is in remission you know i hate this word cure it's fear-based and it doesn't it serves no one any purpose and what no, you, but a, a there's no such thing cure. as cure yeah there's, there's no a, such thing as cure there's there's only the um, the emergence of health. <laughs> yeah, and it's and it's all fleeting. I mean, life is fleeting. I mean, you're only here now. I mean, it's yes. you know, it's just it, it almost becomes spiritual when you even think about it. And it's and it's ah, man, you got to let go of that, and you got to realize that you said it's a perfect storm of collection of symptoms coming together to create a perfect storm. That is exactly how I've seen every single one of my clients heal by looking at the problems, identifying the problems 
fixing them and then creating consistency and time for the body to do what it was naturally made and divinely able to do. The beauty of this, you know, which I love is that you are creating a new paradigm where we move back towards uh, the, the, the shamans of the era, right? You know, and so the shamans of, of history never went to some four year degree program and had to do eight years of post doctoral work and all that BS. They yeah. simply were observers. Yeah. And what you've become is a, a, an extraordinary expert at observation. Yeah. And, and in observation, it starts to be very simple to find the patterns. And once you find the pattern in your life that led to your condition, yep. you're going to be able to re-engineer that almost immediately. Yep. And I, I want each of you listening to know that it's neither of us that's ever going to be your healer. It's, it's no, no outside force that's going to come along to heal you. Healing is literally an inalterable right. It is an inalterable fact of the fabric of your body. You heal. Yeah. You heal when you find you. And this is where the microbiome story gets really fascinating for you because your self-identity does not exist at the molecular level until you are in touch with an intact micro ecosystem. Mm. It's a weird sentence, but you do not have human self-identity until your gut and your skin and your kidney tubules are being bathed in the intelligence of an ecosystem. Mm. That is a very humbling reality, and it changes not just our relationship to our doctors. It has to fundamentally change our relationship to our farmers and to our food industry at large, to the yep. petroleum industry at large, yep. the chemical industry at large. We have to stop trying to engineer outside of nature because every one of those steps in technology are undermining your relationship ultimately with you. And so there are boundaries being put up. There are barriers and you know, pitfalls and uh, you know, barbed wire fences and walls being built between you and your own self-identity through the lifestyle environment of the developed world. Mm. And so mm. I want you to start to be empowered mm. to start drilling. Drill through the walls of fear. Drill through the walls of belief. Yep. Drill through your sense of self-identity because your self-identity right now, somewhere mixed up in there, like you were just saying, is the identity of I am a Crohn's patient. Yeah. I have Crohn's. I am a Crohn's patient is a very dangerous sentence because you're starting to tell 70 trillion cells in your body, you are a disease. Yeah. Your body's gonna respond to that information with fear and attack and it's gonna amp things up. That's and it. it's the opposite of surrender, relaxation, and, and the parasympathetic nervous system taking back over to say, you know what, I'm me. Yeah. I own this space. I'm going to hold this space. Meditation, prayer, song, yep. poetry, creativity. That's, those are the avenues that I find most powerful. And yeah. you can see why people don't think they can heal. is because as we decline in the opposite direction, as we're declining, we become more and more egocentric. We, we start to cut off relationship we start to cut off new experience and new environments and we become more and more isolated in our dis-ease state, which reinforces our divorce from the greater nature around us. And so when a cancer patient walks into my clinic, they're kind of dumbfounded when I tell them that within a year, they're going to think the cancer that has just been diagnosed will be the best thing that ever happened to them. Yeah. And within that year, they're going to find out why they're here on earth. Why did you jump into this body and go through the journey that you've been on? Because you're here on purpose and it's not to work nine to five for the man. It yeah. is to do something creative, profound from you to participate in a transformation of human experience that has never existed before, or we will be extinct in the next 60 to 70 years. I tell every single person, I say, Crohn's is the best thing that ever happened to me. No yeah. one gets it. No one gets it. And you want to know why? Here's the secret. Here's the clue on why Crohn's cancer. Because if you can get to the other side of the fence, it will have directed you to yourself as you defined it. It will have directed you to true health, self-empowerment, self-awareness, to be in joy, in the moment of joy, to be aware of energy. You know? I mean, you nailed it, man. I, I love it. I'm so stoked. Let me dive into that because that, the self-identity piece here is kind of where, where our science blew out of the box. So I left academia in 2010 out of 
necessity. I was terrified to leave academia. I, I love teaching and I love doing medical research, bio, biomedical research. And I thought well, I would lose both of those if I left academia. They certainly wanted me to believe that. And so when I set out on my own, I went to a rural town in Virginia, a town, town of 550 people to start a nutrition center to teach impoverished communities how to eat uh, healthy in food deserts, mm-hmm. how to grow their food, how to you know, dive back into a, a real food independence to regain health independence. So that was my mission in 2010. And what we found is that we were doing all the things right by the textbooks of nutrition, and yet our patients were getting more inflamed on kale and you know, juicing and everything else we were pounding into them, not less inflamed. They were actually feeling better and actually inflammatory markers lower on processed bread than they were on kale. That was so bizarre to watch that happen. It took me a couple of years to believe what I was seeing because I didn't trust my patients because that's another thing we're taught as doctors. If the patient's you know, biochemical or clinical behavior is not matching the textbook, it's their fault. They must not be doing what you're asking them to do. Yeah. And so I, I was in that typical belief, well, they're getting more inflamed because I told them to go juice, but they must not be juicing. They must be eating Twinkies. After two years of being a, a standalone doctor, this never happens in academia where you are fully responsible 24 seven for all your patients. And that was a scary thing to tackle. Yeah. Uh, I had no backup. I, had, I was just a solo doctor out there handling everything that walked through the door. But the gift that that brought me was many, but one of the profound ones was I ultimately had a deeper relationship with my patients than I'd ever had with any before, yeah. which gave me the opportunity to ultimately build trust. And once I see trusted patients going the wrong direction on my scientifically proven nutritional methodology, I had to come to terms with there was something missing from my picture. I didn't have a complete map of how nutrition integrates with human health. Mm. So this is where we started diving into the soil. And in the dive into the soil, I bizarrely came across this huge carbon molecule in a soil science paper that looked a heck of a lot like the chemotherapy I used to design out of vitamin A compounds. Mm. Medicine has been looking to plant science and plant compounds since the beginning of Chinese medicine 5,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. It was a huge paradigm leap in my brain to imagine what if the soil was an untapped source of medicine? What if the real true source of health rather than drug was in the soil. And so that was my, the beginning. This was 2012 now. And as we started to ask those questions, it suddenly became obvious that we had just uncovered the real mechanism by which self-identity at the cell level occurs. Mm. What do I mean by that? What we had found was that these carbon molecules made by bacteria and fungi in the soil or in your gut produce the, the wireless communication network for one cell to talk to another cell. That wireless network induces the ability for uninhibited communication. And just like a couple of humans, if you have your cell phones working, there's no no possibility of interruption of of communication. But if you're further than seven miles from the closest cell phone tower, you're rendered useless. You don't have any clue what your friend or family member is doing on the other side of the county or the world. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what's happening in your gut when you start to lose health. You're losing the intracellular communication network and your cells, while equipped with all the machinery for repair and health, can't hear or communicate to the neighbor. And now you get loss of coordinated function. Okay. And this is leads to the first step towards autoimmune disease, which is leaky gut. Yep. The one Stay cell in this small intestine needs to be linked to, to a billion others to make one single intelligent barrier system. Yep. And what's happening is as we eliminate the microbiome, lose the carbon matrix of this wireless communication network, the cells can no longer function as one, as one and they start to act as little individual islands, and suddenly your food, everything in the outside world can move into your immune system sitting right behind that gut lining, and you overwhelm it quickly with an inflammatory process, and eventually one of those T cells is going to react to a protein or a peptide in your food that's going to look a lot like your gut lining, and you start to tear up your own vascular and, and mat- you know, connective tissue matrix of your gut, and you've got a syndrome that we call Crohn's or inflammatory bowel disease. Immune. So just for everyone out there who said, what was that? Basically, leaky gut, space and junctions within the gut line, and the cell wall starts to separate and leaves holes where food or undigested particles can leak into your bloodstream 
the immune system, such as a T cell, will notice that and eventually start reacting to it, therefore giving you an autoimmune disease. The immune system is auto-reactive towards things, and a lot of them tend to be food or things like that. And it's the, the space injunction is usually because the cells are not talking uh, to each other, and that's from uh, carbon. Yeah, so the, the wi wireless communication network are these large carbon molecules. We call them, as a family, terahydrite, because there's millions of variants of the carbon molecule. Each species of bacteria and fungi makes a slightly different subset of these, these millions of variants. And when you get millions of variants in, in, in a matrix, they create literally a liquid circuit board. Mm -hmm. So now this liquid circuit board integrates the extracellular space and is communicating from one cell to the next down at the nuclear level of the cell, meaning that the human nucleus where all your DNA is held, the, the nucleus has no intelligence to it. It's just the warehouse. Mm. That warehouse figures out what's needed on the cell surface or enzymes for detox, all of that, by the information stream coming from these carbon molecules or being propagated by these, these carbon molecules so that an, a cell can suddenly realize, oh, I'm a small intestine cell. That's my self identity, which means I need to immediately be in communication and connection with at least a billion other small intestine epithelial cells so that I can form an intelligent barrier system to protect the human that's behind me. Hmm. It didn't know all of that information a moment ago because it was so isolated with the collapse of the ecosystem. Hmm. Why is your ecosystem collapsing? Why is, is the human health suffering? because we are eating and drinking antibiotic in the form of Roundup. Roundup is the famous weed killer that we started eating and drinking around 1996. Small amounts in the early 1990s, but really went berserk with the, the advent of the GMO, genetically modified Roundup ready crops, the corn, the soybean, and ultimately the canola and alfalfa and everything else. Those staple crops were suddenly being able to be sprayed directly with a weed killer. The plant would not die, the, the weed killer would integrate into the water structure of the plant and would leach out into the soils, into the river systems, and go into our water table. Now we have 75% of our air, 75% of our rainfall contaminated with this Roundup molecule. That's Bizarrely, this glyphosate molecule has never been patented as a weed killer. It's only been patented as an antibiotic, antifungal, antiparasite. It kills the, the, the ecosystem itself and therefore kills the plant and larger biology trying to grow out of it. And so here we are eating, drinking, breathing, being rained on by an antibiotic. That's where your ecosystem went. Wow. And so now that your ecosystem collapsed, you guys are the first generation to grow up in the Roundup. If you were born after 1992, you've really probably never known a breath of air that didn't have at least some you know, tiny trace amount of Roundup in it. And so wow. you were born there. Now your children, our, our, our autistic generation, right? We went from one in 5,000 children to one in 30 children with autism in 30 years. And, and we're so, seeing all, all disease, right? We're seeing all disease since 1992 just start spiking. I think it was yeah. Tom Ryan who said uh, one in two people will, by the year 2030, will be diagnosed with a chronic disease. 46% of, of our children now have a chronic disease today. 40, today, 46% of our children have a chronic disease. 46%. It's, you know, so we're nearly at one in two children with a chronic disease. To put this in perspective, in the 1960s, before chemical farming became the thing, 4% of the entire population in the U.S. had a chronic disease. So we went from 4% of child to, to grave to 46% of children with chronic disease in, in this short 50-year period. And so we've got ourselves really an extraordinary situation that we showed up here, you and I showed up with this generation to be one of seven billion people to be at the tipping point of human history. We're losing one species every 20 minutes. We are halfway done. We're about 45% through the great extinction on the planet. Wow. In another 60 to 70 years, human life will blink out because we will not have enough matrix left to support human biology. The soil will be dead, the bees will be dead, the, the butterflies will be gone. We will wipe out to the point of extinction in 60 to 70 years. That's and so you picked now to show up. And so I have to tell you guys, you've been diagnosed with Crohn's, but you actually just got diagnosed with purpose. You yeah. showed up here to be on purpose to make a transformation happen. And this is your life that you take a hold of. And you now become part of a mission-oriented, purpose-oriented community that can change everything. 
And so one of my big projects right now is an org, a nonprofit that I just started called Planet Earth Home. Mm -hmm. We've created a, a documentary series that's just coming out. Uh, the first segment comes out next month. Uh, it's called uh, Farmer's Footprint. And it's, it's showing you this history of agriculture and our chemical ag paralleling the chemical pharmaceutical companies and how the two of them together have completely devastated biology on earth. And mm -hmm. so we're taking the opportunity to pair consumers for $100 a year to yep. a farmer to empower that chemical farmer to transition to regenerative ag and completely change the ecosystem over the next 10 years to reverse global warming, to reverse soil and oil and ocean death, to reverse all of this because the microbiome is capable of changing all of that. And we so cannot. And this, and this is $100 a year so to a consumer. One acre. One acre. So if, if, so if a consumer such as myself gives $100, then that will help save an acre and the footprint of that to help reverse all these global issues. All right. Well, consider me signed up. I'm signed up, guys. I'm, I'm doing it right now immediately. When we get off this call, I'm doing this. Um, and what was the name of this? Where can people figure this out? And anyone who knows me, if you're a client of mine, I urge you to absolutely do this because this is real. What, where can they figure out more about this nonprofit? Yeah, easiest way to jump on it right now is farmersfootprint.us. Now for everyone out there who, who really is, is, is you know, suffering with Crohn's disease, I, I'd love to talk a little bit about your, your company and your product line and, and what it does within the gut and how someone with Crohn's or even severe Crohn's can, can utilize the product. So the product's called Restore. Can you tell me a little bit about what it is and what it does? Yeah, so Restore is uh, the, the, the title on, on the dietary supplement that uh, comes out of that carbon molecule research that we, we started in 2012. Okay. The, the carbon molecules are derived from fossil soil that dates back 60 million years ago. And that's important from a molecular standpoint because 55 million years ago on this planet, we had a big asteroid hit, covered the planet in dust, and it killed the topsoil. So we had a huge collapse of ecosystem at the molecular, at the microbiology level some 55 million years ago. So backing up beyond that, we can find the fossil record of 60 million year old soil. The topsoil levels were massively thick at that time. You know, it wasn't hard to find 15 to 20 feet of topsoil on the planet. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's, you're lucky to find five to 10 inches of topsoil. So there, there's an ecosystem present at that time and, and on Earth's history that humans have led, literally never touched. We showed up 180,000 years ago compared to 60 million years ago. And so it's been really mind-blowingly exciting to bring this product to market because what it's doing is literally for the first time steeping the human biology in a, in a communication network. It's sterile. There's no bacteria and fungi left in the fossil. All that's left is the, the remnants of the carbon communication network between the ecosystem. So we're extracting that. You can find these molecules in things like humic acid, fulvic acid, shilajit, some of these mineral supplements that have been around a long time. Unfortunately, as I dove into this effort to extract these things, we find that fulvic acids and humics and all these are very oxidative. They mm -hmm. tear electrons off of the surface and they'll cause more damage, not less, especially to an inflamed membrane. And so we had to do you know, a lot of molecular biology tricks uh, to get the oxygen and hydrogen binding back onto these carbon molecules so that they would not be oxidative. And so now they're in a redox state in the Restore product in which they are delivering electrons in, a, in a, a, an equal portion to its oxidative capacity so that it can send signal and receive signal, which okay. is exactly what it does. This is the very first supplement that you're gonna take into your body that tries to do absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. We okay. actually batch control and scientifically check each batch to make sure it's doing nothing. Because okay. if it does something, then it's gonna disrupt the ability of the cell to be the source of information. If you take vitamin A, it is a massive, you know, exogenous signal to the nucleus of your cells to do something. Mm -hmm. If you take vitamin D, if you take a drug, they all are doing something to a, a, a receptor, a yep. protein synthesis pathway, all this. Restore simply bathes just like the, the, the wireless communication network. The cell phone tower has never initiated a phone call or a thought, but you can't get the phone call without that, that propagation. Yep. So we have to spend a lot of molecular tricks and then do a lot of safety control before we ensure that this does nothing. Mm. So as soon as you start taking this, you're gonna say, BS, this does nothing because something is gonna happen to you as soon as you start taking Restore. 
and it doesn't always follow what you would like. Of course, you would love to take a bottle of something and be cured of your, your condition. But we spent the first 20 minutes of this podcast telling you health does not come from anybody but inside of you. Yep. And so what does the wireless communication network do? It simply amps up the signal that's coming out of your cells. Well, imagine now a gut lining that's torn apart, bleeding, totally dysfunctional immune system, maybe been under the influence of drugs and immunosuppressives for years, and now suddenly gets signal. That's a lot of information to handle because all of a sudden everybody's going to hear, help! <laughs> You're going to have this overwhelming information stream saying, everything needs repair right now. It's an emergency. This guy's dying. Mm. And so what we tend to do is we'll go real slow on reintroducing the communication network because there's no point in trying to heal you tomorrow because ultimately you know how you, where you need to get to. Intrinsically, inside of you, you know the path. We need, to, we need to empower the path with Restore at a rate that your immune system can handle. And yeah. in some ways, it's not so much the immune system, but this big protein uh, kind of reservoir, which are the antioxidants. The antioxidants in your body right now, if you've been on drugs or you've been under a chronic inflammatory state, are completely depleted. You do not have a reservoir of antioxidants to deal with the normal regenerative effect of a normal immune system and normal cellular repair process. As you put the wireless signal back in, you're going to start making DPP-4 enzymes. You're going to make glutathione, which is the primary antioxidant in the body. Mm -hmm. We see unbelievable increases in glutathione from your intestinal lining. With Restore, well, to give you put this in perspective, you, if you take oral glutathione, we can see maybe a 4% increase in, in, in total glutathione at the end point. Yep. Here, we don't put any glutathione in, and we just give it the cellular communication network, and we see an 800% increase in, in glutathione over the next 12 hours. Glutathione. What is exactly glutathione? And, and I, guys, all of my clients, when we test their glutathione levels, they're all depleted. Yes. Every single one of them. So you, what you, you can't have symptoms of, of inflammatory bowel disease if you had a reservoir of glutathione. The reason is, is because it's a large protein that, let's imagine it looking like Pac-Man. Okay. So Pac-Man's got this, you know, big globe with this mouth that kind of opens and closes. Mm -hmm. the, the mouth of the, of, of the antioxidant glutathione, and there's a, a problem with our lexicon here. We, we say the word antioxidant, and it sounds like an antioxidant is the opposite of an oxidant. That's not at all true. An oxidant is anything that tears, tears electrons off of other things. Mm -hmm. uh, vitamin, vitamin C is an oxidant. Uh, alpha lipoic acid is an oxidant. All of these you know, things that we think of as being anti-inflammatory are actually oxidants. They, they tear electrons off. Mm -hmm. They can have a net positive if you take them correctly because they bond in the mouth of the Pac-Man. So glutathione and other antioxidants will bind an oxidant, but they're not the opposite of. What they're there to do is be the Pac-Man to put an oxidant with its opposite, which is a reductant. So an oxidant needs an electron or tears it off, the reductant donates an electron. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the antioxidant molecule like glutathione is this Pac-Man moving through your body with mouth open, waiting for an oxidant. As soon as an oxidant binds, then it will look for a reductant. And as soon as the reductant binds, it will slam shut, combine those into a neutral salt and release. And mm -hmm. so it's gonna be releasing, absorbing and releasing oxidants and reductants to combine them into to neutral salts. And so that's the process of glutathione. And so you want lots of Pac-Man running through the tissue all the time, looking for oxidants and, anti and reductants to neutralize the space and keep it neutral. The big note, guys, if you're using ALA or you're using glutathione um, or using vitamin C and you know you have leaky gut and, and severe type of autoimmune disease, then you might want to re reduce that until you get your glutathione levels up which one could be using Restore, two, you could be taking maybe like a liposomal glutathione or something like that uh, to help get it in your system. Uh, would you say that that would be uh, some good advice for someone who out there who's currently using vitamin C who's, who has chronic Crohn's? Yeah, so you know, if we take oral glutathione, it's, it's short-lived, and so I'd rather have your gut make it. Um, mm -hmm. So we use Restore compound for that. Uh, another compound that can do it is a SIA. Uh, see as a salt water uh, supplement, unfortunately went a uh, network marketing route, which makes it confusing and, and suspicious. Uh, yeah. But the science is very real behind that compound. I know the guys who, uh, you know, 
created that compound and all that brilliant scientists. Uh, so the product's real, even though the, the marketing stuff can be a little bit of uh, you know, difficult to wade through. Um, but the reality is we know that that increases glutathione as well. And so it's another redox molecule. It doesn't, it's, you know, uh, acts opposite of restore. Restore um, shuts down stress, uh, reactive oxygen stress in a healthy cell and it revs it up in a, in a sick and damaged cell. And so yeah. restore has a beautiful kind of dichotomous thing, whereas a CIA revs up everybody's mitochondria and just says help everywhere. And that has a net positive that it kind of mobilizes everything and everything else. But a CIA, you have to be very careful with. You don't want to rush into that one with a condition like Crohn's because you can quickly overwhelm the, the system with information uh, with this kind of giant scream out of help from healthy cells and damaged cells. Uh, Restore is a little bit more forgiving because it's you know, decreasing stress in your healthy cell population while, while amping up the signal in the damaged cells that need the attention. We have to find out what are the stressors, fears, belief systems that are keeping you locked in a disconnect from who you really are. That's going to be different matrix for everybody. And so that's where your prayer and meditation and your music creativity led the path, I think. The biology that you practice with changes in nutrition and exercise, all that, could not have created the same results without going within first, mm -hmm. finding that silence, finding who you are, then the biology is gonna unfold around you. So start, restore, slow, ease into it. What about probiotics? We hear probiotics as this really important methodology for gut health. Yep. I think it was important for the industry because it finally forced us to admit as doctors and scientists that, okay, there are such a good thing as good bacteria. Yep. 20 years ago, you couldn't have found a doctor who believed that. And yeah. so I think the probiotic mission and industry has been very important in changing the dialogue on the microbiome, but it is nowhere near the solution. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we keep uncovering more and more data to say that they are actually can be used very harmfully. Mm -hmm. I certainly respect the way that you've gone about your very selective effort to find a, a quality product. Mm -hmm. What we find in this recent publication coming out of Cell, which is one of the most highly respected, scientifically rigorous journals on the planet, Yep. In September of 2018, they published an incredible uh, university-based study that did this in multiple species, both rodents and humans, to show that the one time that I thought that it was reasonable to take a probiotic would be after an antibiotic, right? Mm -hmm. It seems like that's opposite and equal. We should be able to say that's going to be a benefit because we know with an antibiotic, we wipe out diversity in the microflora. We leave behind a few species that are drug resistant. Mm -hmm. And so there, it seems like well, that's an obvious place where we should move in with a probiotic and try to throw a few extra strains in. The problem with that, of course, on a theoretical level, is that a healthy ecosystem of the gut should have anywhere from 20 to 40,000 species of bacteria mm -hmm. and some cohort of 5 million species of fungi. And so we come along with three species of bacteria and say, take this at billions of copies and you'll be just fine. It will improve your microbiome. Well, it's actually impossible for three species to turn into 30,000 species. Mm -hmm. It's even more impossible for it to not only be bacteria, but then somehow fix fungi. And so the probiotic industry doesn't make any sense when we back up and look at what a healthy ecosystem looks like. Mm -hmm. So how come it is possible that, that, that you could feel a ditzel better on, on a probiotic? Because it does force a shift in the relationship in the immune system in some situations. And so you may get a bump for a week or two of improvement. And then the brain immediately says, okay, I feel better on a probiotic. I'm going to stay on that thing. Mm -hmm. Not realizing that you just doomed the success of that thing for the long term. Mm -hmm. What this study in cell showed is that if you wipe out the microbiome with antibiotic and then you start a probiotic, you freeze the microbiome in time. Mm -hmm. Not entirely frozen in that there's a one week or two week bump in, in diversification and then it goes right back down to where the antibiotic had taken and it keeps it there. Mm. And the mice, this lasted all the way out to, to like three months where they ran the mice study. No, no statistical recovery of microbiome. In the humans, they ran it for six months and they still had not recovered microbiome at six months on a probiotic. Fortunately, the study did two controls. One was a fecal transplant of their own microbiome pre-antibiotic. Of course, if they started taking oral fecal transplant of their own microbiome, they recovered within about two to three weeks mm. to complete normalcy. But mm. bizarrely, they also had a placebo arm that gave them no bacteria, and both the mice and the humans by 30 days had completely recovered normal microbiome with no probiotic and no fecal transplant. Mm. That defies our <laughs> current understanding in the industry of how a probiotic should work. 
30 day recovery with nothing, six months, no recovery with a probiotic. So uh, we'll, we'll include those in your show notes uh, to the cell uh, journals because it's critical in understanding of our, our interaction with a probiotic. So how should we take a probiotic or should we even take a probiotic? For me, this was the end of probiotic use in my clinic, but that's because I'm, I, I, that's just who I am personality wise. I shift on a dime. I don't mind admitting that I've been wrong for 20 years. I can admit that all the time and I'll just go the other direction. Yeah. But the other piece of this is there might be a role of probiotics somehow, but we just haven't figured out what that is. My new warning to my patients is that if you're ever going to take a probiotic, don't make it in the two or four weeks after an antibiotic. Give your body time to reaccumulate a probiotic, your, your own ecosystem. And then you might, you know, throw a probiotic on top of that. If you're going to throw a probiotic on, I would encourage you to think about intermittent use of it, which would be, you know, once a week hit it with, you know, a bunch of bifidobacteria or something like that, back off for five, six days, let the ecosystem re-equilibrate around that information, and then hit it again and see how that works. But we're now seeing very clearly we should not throw three species or one species dominant strain into a depleted uh, situation and expect diversification. It just can't happen. And so if we're going to use them, we need to use them increasingly intelligently and sparingly, because if they have a role, it must be very nuanced. And, and a lot of my patients swear, I do feel better on my probiotic until they start Restore. Restore, uh, the very first patient I started on had a sterile gut. This you don't see in Crohn's. You guys see a lot of antibiotics, but you'll never see as much as a pancreatic cancer patient. So a pancreatic cancer patient was my first uh, clinical case that I started on Restore. And uh, she had a, what we call white chalk stools. Uh, and some of you may have achieved these at some point. I have seen a couple of IBD patients who, who've gotten this sterile. But what happens is you get enough rounds of chemotherapy and enough rounds of antibiotics on top of that that you completely wipe out the organic material in the gut. And all you're left with is the epithelial lining of the intestines that sloughs every three days. And so your stool becomes a little piece of white chalk that comes out rectally every four or five days and that's your only bowel movement for years. Mm. So this woman had been having white chalk stools uh, for the last year after many courses of chemo and antibiotics. And then we take a sterile compound. Restore has no bacteria or fungi on it, just the communication matrix by which the, the ecosystem talks. And within four days, she had her first normal brown bowel movement in a year. Wow. That was brain numbing to me. I, I literally couldn't believe it happened went to her house three days later to try to figure out how this was possible because she had almost immediately started having daily brown bowel movements, not just one. Mm -hmm. So I went there on Monday, her first bowel movement had been Friday. She's just elated, you know, and this was a huge transformation in her health. And I'm sitting there, I'm saying, this seems physically impossible. I do not understand how I, I deliver you a, a sterile product and you somehow rebuild a microbiome in, in the matter of four days. It doesn't make any sense. The whole time I'm trying to explain this to you, this ridiculous lap dog keeps jumping up in my face and licking my face, and I'm literally pushing it off and pushing it off, and suddenly realize that that dog just saved your life. Mm. I gave you back the communication compost for the microbiome. That dog gave you a fecal transplant by licking your face. This woman <laughs> was non, uh, she, uh, she couldn't take any solid foods in, she couldn't actually drink liquids other than just like a swab of water in her mouth because she had a total bowel obstruction for the last four months. To put this in perspective, how sick this woman was, she weighed 59 pounds. She was 59 years old, weighed 59 pounds. She was a walking skeleton. I've never seen anybody like her. Big, huge smile, giant blue eyes, never complained in the world, a walking angel. Wow. First giant brown bowel movement because this dog was running around outside licking every other dog's butt and then come run in and lick this woman's face all up in her she's get, kissing her dog <laughs> microbiome transplant restores just there as the matrix and suddenly yeah. it repopulates her whole gut and she had never even taken a probiotic or let alone a bite of food and she had normal bowel flora oh. and so that journey trained me to realize that we are only as good of a microbiome as we are connected to mother nature and so in the end you can start restore but you're not going to heal until you find your niche your role in singularity with mother nature, which means you need to be out hiking, you need to be out kayaking, you need to be out in the ocean surfing, you need to find your niche out there in nature and breathe it, touch it, surround yourself with it, bury yourself in mother nature and that woman is gonna take care of you. 
that is going to be your nurture, your health, your recovery. You are you. Mother Nature is your mother. And it's going to be a beautiful thing when you capture that because you aren't going to be a stoppable force at that point. When somebody heals, I just know they cannot be stopped. Not by a government, not by a pharmaceutical company. You guys are unstoppable. So it's been a pleasure to be on your podcast. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, and Dr. Bush, you were, this was by far so... Uh, again, eye-opening, and I, I enjoyed this so much and learned a ton. I hope you guys learned a ton from this. Yeah, you can, uh, again, his nonprofit, uh, FarmersFootprint.us. It'll be in the blog as well. And then if you are interested in trying out Restore, uh, shop.restoreforlife.com. We'll have a link below as well. Thank you so much, Dr. Bush, and uh, we'll talk soon.